Hello Fusers, in this video I just wanted to give everyone a simple overview of the new Centrifuge Studio that has been released in conjunction with Centrifuge 3.5. This video will cover just a few of the application's features to give you a better idea of its uses and applications in skinning. This video was made with the first beta version of the Centrifuge Studio. What do you say we get started because I've got a lot to cover. First, let's talk about the main sections of the interface you'll be greeted with when you first run the studio. The toolbox is a window of the most commonly used elements of a skin you'll encounter within Centrifuge. You can drag these pieces directly onto the canvas of the screens you'll be editing. Look down just a bit and you'll see the images window. It is a list of all the declared images within the skin.xml. What's cool here is that all you need to do is drag your new images right into this box from your desktop or work file and they will already be available to use within the skin. Over here, the Solutions Explorer window lists all of your screens, dialogues, and elements you have in your skin. And the Properties window is, well, just the properties of any selected element. We'll get more into that in just a minute. And finally, the Views window is the canvas we'll be painting our skin on. So now I'm going to open the default 3.5 clean skin via the skin.xml. You can open any skin.xml file, whether it's for a whole skin or just a single plugin. So right here, you can see all of the declared images inside the skin. All of the skin's effects, font classes, cached images, button images, and icons are all in these little rollout menus. Let's open one of the pages here and see what we have. We'll start with the main screen. So I go to the Solutions Explorer in the Screens tab and double click Main. It'll open up the screen in the Views window and we'll also tree out all the beautiful treasures contained within. As you select each element, it will highlight on the canvas. You can also directly click and drag around pieces on the canvas. I find zooming in helps a lot when you're looking to get precise placement of button overlays and text labels. Click zoom in or zoom out in the header, or use control plus and control minus. This element resize and reorient feature alone will save skinners a ton of hours and changes. To get a quick view of your work, you may hide the selection boxes with Ctrl H or with this icon in the header. You can also click the buttons while in this mode which will give you a good preview of how the app will work when it's implanted in Centrifuge. Let me give you a quick overview of how we'll be dealing with the advanced list views in this version of the Centrifuge Studio. First, we'll open the media player and its element tree. Expand main panel and then default, which is the ID name of the default advanced list view. Here you'll see all of the states of the advanced list view from the media player. Default, selected, highlighted, selected, highlighted, and deleter. Selecting one will populate the list view box with one line item from the state. You can see that the default state contains title, artist, and genre labels, a favorites icon, and the line break end image. These pieces move and scale just like any other element inside of the application. To view these list view changes in action, simply launch Centrifuge and navigate to the page you are editing. Down the line we plan to introduce a method to preview these list views in real time within the Centrifuge Studio. Now I'm going to edit one of our buttons here, the voice recognition enable button. Simply click it and look to the properties window. All of the controls you will need and expect will be listed here. If it's a dynamic button, you will need to set the on and off button graphic, which is here. If there's any text on the button, you can select the font style, class, and text here. Basically, anything you'll need to edit an element is available from the properties window. Scroll down a bit to access the CML actions list. Here you basically select the action of the button. We've included about every action that is available within Centrifuge. 
as we continue development on this application, we'll be introducing more CML actions. Several actions are only available for certain screens, such as the dial out button on the phone page. If you have created custom CML actions, you may also manually enter them in here. If you feel like you'd rather fine tune some of the elements or design strictly in the XML, click this icon in the header to enter XML mode. Save and close the changes when you're done, and the changes will be reflected in the Views window. If the screen hasn't refreshed yet, just close the view of the screen and reopen it. Another great time saver of the Centrifuge Studio that we've included is the ability to preview alternate language translations on the fly. Simply click Project, Languages, and then select your language. One last neat little feature is screen stacking. Let me just show you. You can see here we have the main screen and the phone screen. But the phone screen seems a little off by itself. Now if, if we select both of them in the Solutions Explorer with Control plus click and then click on this icon here, we can see what they will look like when they are layered on top of each other in Centrifuge. Pretty cool, right? So that's just a brief overview of the Centrifuge Studio. Head on over to centrifuge.com for more information and download links. And drop by our forums if you have any questions or feedback. Happy skinning, guys.